I was testing the Miss Bud on Saturday of Seafair Week in 1992. Everything was going great. As I headed into the south turn though, suddenly the boat went over. As bad as that was, then came the real ordeal. The panic, the cold water of Lake Washington. And to help you experience what it's like to have a flip like that, the other day I got into the cockpit of the Peters and May boat. And as you can maybe hear or see, when you're in this thing, you feel like you're, you're in a tomb. And in that flip back in 1992. Oh, he flipped! He's over! On his back! In the south turn! Completely disintegrated! That came awfully close to happening. Now, the minute the boat lands upside down, this is not watertight. It starts filling up with water. But it's coming from what was the top, now the bottom. But luckily, I'm on a, what we call an oral nasal breathing device. So I've got the air device on that's pumping air into me the whole time. I've got about 20 minutes of air to breathe, so they have 20 minutes of time to get me out. The first thing that every driver learns is do not undo the belts until you have a way out. What happens if you undo those belts, you're going to fall into what is now the bottom, used to be the top, and now it's dark, it's wet, and you can't find anything. So. First thing I do is I take the steering wheel off. That gives me access to the escape hatch in the bottom, which is now the top. I reach down between my legs, turn the handle, and then start kicking with my feet, trying to get it out. No matter how hard I kick, I cannot get it open. I finally give up on the escape hatch, and back. I'm gonna go through the canopy. The canopy is pretty simple. I pull the handle, I push and push and push, and I cannot get that canopy open. Start to panic again. Again, calm myself, that's not gonna help me. Stay in my belt, it seems forever. It seems so long, I actually thought, oh my gosh, everybody might have turned their back and nobody saw me go over. So your mind goes funny places. Time slows down to a crawl when that happens. I didn't know the divers were in the water quickly trying to save me. Pretty soon, I start hearing noises on the hull. That tells me somebody's here. That made me feel a lot better. I didn't feel alone, and I thought, okay, that escape hatch is gonna open. Open, uh, open, it doesn't. I hear tools, but it's not opening. So now I'm starting to panic again calming myself down because it's not going to help me. The last thing I see is a scuba diver. I see his face appear. It's really good to see another human being. He's got a crowbar. The hatch opens up and it feels like the world opened up to me. And uh, you know, I'm not embarrassed to tell you that I kissed a man with a regulator in his mouth right on the lips. I was very happy to see that guy. I, uh, I don't think any of us would blame you for doing that, my friend. Uh, 20 years ago, you know, our, our Cairo 7 news coverage, in fact, of that newscast, and I remember it because I covered this story at Cairo 7, showed Chip and the ambulance and the police escort, and then all of that, and you're back the next day, and you're racing. Here, here it is. This is the police escort to the, uh, to the hospital in the back of the ambulance here. It was just a remarkable story of Chip Hanauer showing up and driving the Miss Bud the next day. It was pretty amazing. So, first of all, how badly were you hurt? I, I really wasn't hurt bad at all. I was sore, but I, you know, really wasn't hurt that bad. The funny story is when I was in the ambulance, I had never been concussed before. And I think you've probably been concussed yes. in your foot. And, oh. you know, you don't feel pain, but things aren't right. And the doctor asked me, do you know what day of the week it is? I said, well, sure I do. He goes, well, what is it? Uh, I couldn't come up with it. And he asked me who the president was. I couldn't come up with that. And my brother, as you know well, said, uh, you know, he always struggles with those questions. Ask him something <laughs> easier so yeah, we can make sure he's okay. You hit with such force in that accident, and the boat literally just came apart around you. It is amazing, though, what those cockpits can do, exactly what they're designed to do, and that saved your life. And I was really lucky that I came through the sport when, before we had those cockpits, and a lot of my friends are no longer with us because they didn't have the cockpit. Um, when you go upside down or when the boat takes off, the whole time you're thinking, please land right side up, please land right side up. Of course, like dropping your open-faced peanut butter sandwich, it never does. It rarely happens that way. Well, we're glad. Obviously, all of us are glad that you're still here with us and talking about boat racing, which we have much more of yet to do here this afternoon.